Actually, I'm going to add that to my select expert. Oh, that would be my P2 field. So I just want to look at just those records. So P2 is equal to rocket science. Okay, because Crystal is smart, what you're going to find is that when you do things like evaluate K, see we just, in our select expert, all we did was we said, okay, we just want key two to be equal to rocket science. We didn't worry about the case here at all. And what we're getting here is every case, and whether it be a proper case or a lower case, it doesn't matter. Crystal's going to be smart about it because it knows that in the real world, we want either one. Um, those of you who might be working with older databases or more precise databases might find yourself, especially working with like legacy systems or, or even, even worse, legacy mailing lists. Oh my God, they can be the worst. Or, or uh, instances where people have been putting in mixed case into the database. So that's great. The, the crystal report is returning rocket science. Well, let's say for, for whatever reason, uh, we need that all uppercase. Maybe we're printing a mailing label. Or maybe, uh, again, with those very precise legacy systems, sometimes you do need to evaluate case. So a better way, um, a technically better way to, to do that statement would be to. And again, whenever I'm looking at, at creating a clever select expert formula, I'm going to go right to my formula editor. That's where you want to be. I'm going to cheat here and go to my blog and remind myself. U case, U case. Every database system in the world has an uppercase function, and all the uppercase function does in Crystal's case is called U case. So I'm going to throw my key to field to my U case. And let's see what that looks like. Ooh, no, I don't. Pardon me, I don't want to plug that into my select expert right away. I want to actually make that a formula field. I'm getting it, people, I swear to God. Um, industry, very good. Okay, so again, the U case function, all it's going to do is return the uppercase string. So again, whenever I'm working on a formula, I like to drag it right below or next to the formula it's working from so we can see here that it, it's easy to see what it's doing. So in this case, what we'd want to do is in our select expert, not just say key two is equal to rocket science, we're going to say our U case of key two is equal to a screaming rocket science in all caps. Now, why do we do that? Why do we care? Because in our select expert, think about what's going on. The first thing it's doing is it, it's, it's, it's converting that key to field to all caps before it wants to know if it's equal to it or not. So if we always evaluate in all caps and convert to all caps before the evaluation happens, um, we're not going to get mixed and matched cases. Uh, and again, and it might not be uh, something that, that you see a lot, but you will run into it sometimes, especially, uh, again, with older systems. I happen to be on SQL Server 2008 R2, which is about as nice and as new as you can get, so it kind of does some of the easy lifting or heavy lifting for you. But again, whenever, um, and, and especially when you get into, like, people tracking codes, like perhaps they're tracking like, the, like, like this product code that we actually went over last week, which uh, is key three here. Um, if there's no validation on the database end, by which I mean if the people are just allowed to type in whatever they want here, you could have any mixed or matched combination of this widget code. So the, the, uh, the actual... The, the report writer, or the report reader, rather, might not want to see mixed and match cases here, in which case we just create a new formula. 
uppercase product. Don't be afraid to name your formulas like verbosely. I mean, make sure you know what they are when you see the name. And we're just going to give a U case to a key three. And then we can drag it on there. At any rate, um, uh, U case is how you uh, convert anything to uppercase. Uh, to be honest, I don't know if there if there, if there is a corresponding lowercase function. Uh, come to think of it, I don't think I've ever seen one ever in the world of databases. Okay, so let's now have some time left. I did have another item I wanted to show you guys, and, and it might really really come in handy, especially for for those people who are who are doing things like printing notes on a report. So when we think about what kind of notes we might want to print on a report, it could be something like this. Uh, you could have end users typing in things like that with oops, yeah. That with Wiley talked about rocket skates, sending a coupon, blah blah blah. All right, but on the report itself, when you start, and let's just add our history table. So we'll go to our add database to report. And I actually use an ODBC connection. I use ODBC for all my crystal reports. And we'll add the cont hoops. We'll add the cont his table. Oh, I think we already have one. Oh, and there it is. Okay, my mistake. So cont his is already added. So let's drag in. Our notes field. Now, the, the the reason why I actually deleted that from my PowerPoint presentation is, is because Goldmine right now for me is showing blank notes, and the technical reason for that is is that it's not keeping its notes in a plain text format. Um, it, so it, that's a short sight of mine. I apologize. But what I wanted to show you guys is that when you have a notes field that's taking up many lines on your report. So what you might have is a page with a note for every history item. And uh, the end user of the report might just want to know there are notes. Maybe they just want to see the first few lines. And what I'm really, really trying to get at is that when you have a multi-line database object on your crystal report, you can actually control... Uh, you can actually control the number of lines that it's showing. And you do that here with your format field. And for every notes, or actually a blob field is the database type, you can enter in this maximum number of lines and specify whether or not it can grow. So if it can grow, that means it's going to grow however long you want it to. Or you can specify the exact number of lines. I have a client right now that has a report that shows emails here in this area of the detail section. And um, he got sick of having these extremely long, especially emails where, where conversations had been going on for a long time. So you might have this email that's literally 10 pages. Well, on the report, they only want to see maybe the first 25 lines. And that's a good way to do it. Once you drag in your email notes field here, you can go to your, and, and this is really not working out for me, I apologize, but you can go into your, your field formatting here, and you can mess around with this can grow function and give it a maximum number of lines. Now what that allowed them to do was only see like the latest part of the email thread uh, without having, you know, printed across three, four, five pages. Okay, we're going to go for a bonus topic. I want to get a little wheel in here that I can spin like on a Wheel of Fortune. Let's see here. Bonus, bonus, bonus. Bear with me, bear with me. I'm just trying to get something, I guess, interesting here. Formatting percentages. Did you guys know this? This is actually really cool and something that I use all the time. When we think about 
a number in gold mine. Let's do this. Let's just make a number. And all I'm, doing, all I'm doing here is I'm just creating a number field out of thin air, and I'm doing this by using a formula. So think about a formula doesn't necessarily have to look at database values. A formula can literally be 42, just like that. So a formula can really be anything we want it to be. Let's go back in here. But, but what I'm trying to show you guys is, is that once you have a number on the report, in order to get that number as a percentage, what you might be tempted to do is insert a text object right next to it and put a percent sign there. Does that work? Yeah, um, it, it works. You have to kind of screw around with it and get it to look just right. Uh, if your number grows or if your number has a uh, decimal precision or not, depending on what your report happens to be doing at the time, uh, it might run into that percent. So it's, it's usually a balancing act between, you know, where should we put the percent sign and uh, where should we have our numerical field. Uh, one way to get around this is to actually, here we have a blank text object, right? So all I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this field into my oops I'm going to see I drag my test number field right into my text object and now I can double click into my text object and now I can put a space and then my percent sign that's one way to do it so now we have just one nice object that we can move around and we know it's always going to be our percentage we don't have to worry about you know, screwing around with that percentage identifier. Another way to do it, and actually my favorite way to do it, because once once it's locked in this text field, you can't do anything with it. You can't perform math on it. You can't summarize it without screwing around with more conversions. So while that's nice and all, and that might be nice for like a report like footer or maybe like a summary page, we really want to get this to be a number. So let me just delete that baby there. The first thing we have to do is make sure that our number is a number. In this case, our number is not a number because it's enclosed in quotations. So that means it's a string. So Crystal comes with like this coolest function ever, the two number function. Converts any string to a number. So now when I drag this number on the report, it's going to behave like a number, which means now when I go into my format field, I get my number tab. What I'm trying to show you guys, again, the whole problem was how do I get this percentage sign easily and maintain a numerical field? Well, what you can do is go into your customize area here and go to currency symbol and say enable currency, but instead of having a dollar sign, make it a percent sign and then put it on the other side of the number. Change the position. And now, much like we had when it was um, the, um, the text object with the percent sign typed in there, this is actually a better solution because we can still perform math on this object, on this field, because it's a number. So I hope you find that useful at any rate. Again, um, you go into your, to your format field, go to customize, and then go to currency, and you can even provide a space if you want. Do you think that looks a little better? Okay, so this will conclude our Crystal Reports Tips and Tricks for March 2012.